Welcome to runner's knee. Now you've heard the term runner's knee. What the heck is that? How do you know if you have it? How common is it? How are you going to recognize it, fix it, and prevent it? That's what we're going to talk about right now. Let's look at the knee now and talk about how we recognize runner's knee. So to look at our knee here, there's several important things. The big bone is called the femur. The bone right here in the front is called the tibia. The smaller skinny bone is the fibula and the kneecap is called the patella. Now when I turn this knee sideways, we're gonna look and see the patella. And what happens in runner's knee is the undersurface of the kneecap gets really mad and hurts a lot and aches in the front of the knee. Now if you look at the patella, the patella is what's called the sesamoid bone. It sits inside of a muscle tendon unit. So the quad muscle's up here, it turns into the quad tendon, and the, the quad tendon then turns into the patella, and off the bottom comes the patellar tendon. So what happens in patellofemoral knee pain, or runner's knee, is you get this chronic irritation underneath the kneecap, and that cartilage gets really angry. We're going to look at what this looks like in a real person, patellofemoral knee pain or runner's knee. So let's have a look here. So again, the big upper bone in the leg here is called the femur. This is the quad muscle. That muscle turns into the quad tendon, and here sits the patella, a sesamoid bone sitting inside that tendon. Now, when Megan straightens her leg up and down a couple times, the kneecap tracks in a little groove called the trochlea. And it's interesting, the kneecap tracking is very much dependent upon two things, how strong this muscle mass is and how flexible it is. Those two things really affect how this kneecap tracks. So when somebody gets runner's knee achiness around the front of their knee and I want to fix them, I want to start thinking about what are the factors around that knee that are making a difference. So when we think about fixing runner's knee, I always think about making happy muscles. So we're going to talk about that first. So our good old friend, the foam roller. Again, if you do not have a foam roller and you run, you're missing out. So get yourself a foam roller. And to, for runner's knee, you're going to talk about rolling out that quad and the IT band. So Megan's going to hop up on this foam roller. And as she demonstrates this rolling out your quad, I'd love for you to give me two or three minutes of foam rolling just on those quad muscles to loosen up those muscles. And you can also flip on your side and show me loosening up that iliotibial band. And loosening up the iliotibial band will, again, loosen up a lot of those uh, tight muscles that are pulling on that kneecap. So number one, when it comes to prevention, I want you to get yourself a foam roller and think about loosening up the muscles that hook into the kneecap. I often find in my patients that the triathletes do a great job of cross-training they train four times as much as runners and they get hurt way less. Why is that? Because they have strong muscles. So if you're a runner and you're not strength training, shame on you. Get started on your strengthening. So what are some of the key strengthening exercises if you want to do a little bit? A couple things I love. I love my plyometric jump squats. Give me four sets of 15 plyometric jump squats every second or third day. I'll be happy. Strong muscles are happy muscles. So don't forget to do your strengthening. I'd say two or three strength sessions a week. If you can do nothing else, give me the plyometric jump squats, but really strengthen all those muscles that hook into the kneecap. The second piece of prevention is strength. Now, when it comes to fixing patellofemoral knee pain or runner's knee, we've talked about loosening the muscles and strengthening the muscles. But if you think about it, the kneecap is trapped between the muscles above and the feet below. Now, part of this is just how you're built. But definitely when it comes to foot mechanics, we know that foot mechanics influence patellofemoral knee pain. So you may think about unloading the inside of your foot. So Megan is going to show us what a pronating foot looks like. So roll all the way into the middle. That's pronation, meaning your foot rolls into the middle. When you do that, it loads a lot more force on the inside part of the kneecap, and people often will get this achiness on the inside part of their patella uh, with a pronating foot. So if you have a foot like that, and you've tried the other things I've talked about and you're still not getting any better, then we're gonna try and support your arch. So you can do that in a couple of ways. Number one, you can get a shoe with a built-in support. Some shoes, running shoes, have a built-in medial posting. They take some of the pressure off the inside part of the foot and that's a good idea to start with. So maybe go talk to one of the running shoe stores about getting something with a little more medial posting, taking some of the pressure off the inside part of the foot. If that doesn't work, you may think about getting an arch support, an orthotic. You don't have to get a custom orthotic. Very few people need those. A number of the over-the-counter orthotics with a hard arch are plenty uh, of support for you. You can get one of those and try those in your running shoe. They'll unload the patella. Now, the final part of fixing patellofemoral knee pain or runner's knee is getting the kneecap itself to be happy. 
when that cartilage underneath your patella is sore, it really sucks and you can't run at all. So a couple things to comment on that. Number one, ice is nature's anti-inflammatory. You know, put some ice on there 15 minutes after every run. That'll help. If you get a nice bath and try and stand in there for a few minutes, and that'll help too. And then sometimes some of the anti-inflammatory medicines can reduce some of that irritation underneath the patella. Now, the key to preventing runner's knee is actually a really strong kinetic chain. The best way to do it, our runner's world workout is called iron strength. Go on runnersworld.com where you are right now, put in iron strength, you'll find our workout. Get started on that. All you need is a pair of dumbbells, some good music, and some good motivation. Now, another thing to think about is if you're not getting better in the traditional ways and you get really frustrated, there's some new different kinds of treadmills. I actually like something called the Alter G treadmill. It unloads you, it allows you to keep running and lessens your body weight, and also training in water can make a difference too. So try and keep yourself moving. Don't get discouraged and sit on the sideline. That really stinks. Now, finally, I want you to think about shortening your stride and quickening your cadence. We know that a short stride, high cadence run reduces loading force for a number of conditions, including shin splints and IT band syndrome and runner's knee. So if you're getting this and you want to keep it away, experiment with a shorter stride, high cadence run. That can make a big difference too. Let's keep runner's knee far, far away, and I'll see you on the road. <laughs>